On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with my old John Deere used Ford C600 cab over. And today, hopefully I get to take it on its first drive all by itself. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho and in the last video about the cab over, of course, you guys saw we actually drove this thing. After we pulled it with a chain, it started up, and then dad laid on the fuel tank and ran the carburetor so we could keep the thing alive while I drove the thing around the yard. And I mean, it ran, it ran and drove. So today, we're gonna rebuild the carburetor. We're gonna start with that first. And then we're gonna install the carb and a new starter. Obviously, we worked on the starter in the last episode as well. And, uh, it should run and drive after that, I hope. I don't think there's anything else left to do. So let's jump right in. Let's start on that carburetor right now. And we are at O'Reilly's to pick up the first of the supplies for today on the cab over. And that is a gallon of carb clean. Let's get it going. What's up, Oscar? What's up? How you doing? Pretty good, man. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. got a day, gallon of carb cleaner. Let's go put that Motorcraft 2100 in there. And we already picked up the carb kit and the starter. So we have all the parts for our Rileys we need to finish it. I think this is the first time I've seen uh, retainers on a bucket lid there. I know this is uh, definitely one of the most dangerous chemicals we ever deal with, but it's pretty crazy that it's got all these clips on there. You basically have to get under it with a screwdriver and then pop them off. And just like that, we got a brand new can of sauce and there's always a basket in the sauce. So if we can get the basket out of there, <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it, I know better. You can grab it with your hand, just wash your hands with water afterwards. I'm just gonna do the screwdriver trick and then I'll put all the little stuff in here and off we go, off to the races. So Jared tore this whole thing apart. I had the front cover off of here and all of that down and then he went ahead and pulled all the little parts while I wasn't here. So you guys can see it go back together, which is honestly more interesting anyway. You didn't really need to see a tear down, you just take all the screws out. And just like that, the basket is loaded up and everything is in there except for the, the main body of the carb. So we're gonna give that a few hours and come back to it. Brand new parts. I took a little bit of air, dried off all the parts that came out of the carb cleaner and we threw the carb body in. I'll tell you what, 2100 is the biggest carburetor you can fit in a one gallon bucket of carb dip, chem dip there. Uh, we usually use a five gallon bucket with an auto uh, bouncer kind of thing. It just sits there and agitates it. But if you force it through the opening on the can, you can get a 2100 into a single gallon. So this whole body was sitting in the carb cleaner for a couple of days. So it does look pretty good. It's pretty cleaned up. It was nasty. Have you... Uh, when it went in, it was terrible. Have you uh, taken carburetor cleaner and blew it through all the little ports and, you know, you got you to gotta make sure that thing is is clean. What I do is take the can of carb cleaner and just give it a little, or a brake cleaner, anything to get a little squirt. And you got to make sure all these little slots are not plugged. They're probably not. Now see, there's the a- slots are. I did spray through uh, whatever. The slots feed out of the bowl or whatever right there. Right. Yeah, so I did blow solvent through those and they're great. Okay, well, you probably got it all clean. The only right? one I haven't checked is that pumper on the side. Isn't that the accelerator? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, you can see, you can see light through them. Sure. Down there, them two back here at the back. Look great. Those two guys, all right? This is your vacuum control for, for extra fuel. And we want to make sure these little guys, see that's... Yep. Okay, see that was, that's a drill hole where they drilled it. Right. At the factory. And then plugged it. Right. And so, yeah. so see you can see light all the way down through there. Yep. And then we can see light out through there. So that looks good. I think they're all... I think I, you got it. I did blast solvent through every single... So why is it, like what, what, what's... What is this? Yeah, I don't know what this weird stuff is. It's not normal, but uh, it, actually it's not gonna, it looks like a corrosion. Yeah. Cause it's not, it's not, see that? I tried to wipe it all out. Yeah. Uh, I've scrubbed it and scrubbed it and then hit it with a solvent sprayer. It's not, it's not like it's gonna hurt anything. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Comes out? Yeah, I don't know what. It comes look, out a little bit. <laughs> look, at, look at that, it's uh, I don't know what that is. Just corrosion looks like. It's corrosion with a little bit of oil in it. Why is it oily? Did you oil it up? Uh, solvent is the last thing oh, it touched. Okay, so it's probably just oily solvent. Yeah. The rest of it's gonna be okay. It, it'll run just fine. It'll run like a million dollars. Yep. 
So you gave me a uh, jigsaw puzzle here. Yeah, while we were gone, um, uh, one of Santa's elves came in and tore this carburetor down and left it in the buckets for us. I like to take them apart myself. That way I can... Uh, <laughs> Don't we all? Figure out how to... <laughs> how that goes back together. But Jared tore it all down for us, uh, which is, you know, nice, but also tough, because... That goes like that. Yep. Yeah. At least okay. it's easy to tell with the limits. So this must go... And we know that he took a picture, so we know the butterfly dimples face the bottom of the screws. The bottom of the screws? Yeah. So yes. The dimples go in this way. Exactly. Right? That's exactly how she goes. Give it a oh, full you got to be up on the spring. Give it full <clears> throttle. <throat> I see. We got another... Uh, Here's the other one. Butterfly. Here, it's pretty up. Uh, ah, that won't hurt nothing. That'll dry right up. Cool. Just like that. Now uh, we should have some butterfly screws. Which these match. Should be uh, four of them. And these I know are the lid. So there's four of those. Which means Two those of them. are the. There it Another is. one. Okay, so that's got to be these. Jigsaw puzzle working. Usually you never want to put these in without some uh, Loctite. Um, um, a touch of Loctite on them, or you got to peen the ends over. And a lot of times they were peened. These were never peened. See that? Yeah. They were never peened, so that means they held them in with Loctite. So what we want to do... You want blue Loctite, red Loctite? Let's put some red on there. See, there's a little bit of... Yeah. There's a little bit of uh, work Got on the end of that. Loctite time. Maybe put these tiny little screws back into the throttle blades. Yeah, so we'll just put just a, just a little dab will do you. The problem is, those ones don't like the little dab. <laughs> it all yeah. comes out at once. True. And let's see, we've got our carb kit here, 15369D. This was actually in stock at O'Reilly, so that was awesome. Stop. No return. Shrink wrap is open. Oh no. You know what they say. Everything is a hammer. <laughs> Unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. Oh good. We have new parts for all the stuff I didn't clean. Uh, there was really no good way to clean this because the gasket wasn't going to come off, but... Hey, we are good to go. So we'll put that gasket on there, get that ready. Whole new diaphragm for the accelerator pump, it looks like. And when I put these on, I like to just get them close. Yeah. Snug them up, leave them loose on the board. Leave these, these just slightly loose, just so that I can still slide the shaft around. Oh. They don't move much. But you want to get these tight. Yes. A minute ago, it was moving quite a bit more. So let's see if we can back them off. See that? See how that moves? Yep. So you want to get. I'm just trying to put it back where it was, but by, but by sliding that back and forth, what we can do is get these, get them butterflies so where they're perfectly tight in the bore. If I just hold down on it, want to keep them tight? No, I don't. I want to. I want to slide that. Now you can see where this. See that wear mark right there? Yeah. It was back in a little so bit. So we'll put that back in there, right there, like that. That's about right. Give these a little. Snug. I'm putting pressure on this while I'm doing it. I see. That way the butterflies now are seated in their bore. Because these are these these butterflies are actually beveled. So they're as you can see, they don't come all the way to 90 degrees. So they're beveled so that they fit tight shut off in there. Now you don't have to twist these off, which you can. Of course it looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure on them. I'm not. I'm just trying to give it that just pushing down just really that, hard. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't strip them and give them just a just a little snug. Okay, and that's what we want. We want them, see that bevel? Yep. They're beveled so that they'll tight seal off in there. <coughs> okay, so that's together. That's coming back to where, it, where it's rubbed for years on the idle. So now we need to put the jets in. So here's your two yep. mains. We'll put them right down here in the bottom. Very nice. Are you looking for a bigger screwdriver? Because that's the wrong mm, one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it works. It'll work. Okay, you guys can see the jets right there. It's tough to get those without a giant straight bit screwdriver on there. You need a big driver. I think I might have a bigger one here that'll bridge that. And again, these don't have to be over tightened. You just don't want them to come out. But it, it don't take much. That's all it takes. They didn't have gaskets or seals or anything? I don't know. I didn't take it apart. Look at that. They don't even put instruction sheets in them anymore. Oh, you have to go to uh, 
Ah, go to walkerproducts.com slash support. Why print one when you can tell us so, uh, I, I, if you were out in the middle of nowhere trying to put this together, <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> You better. Uh, I wouldn't be very happy. We got our book. Okay, now the 37, that's the two main jets. They just go directly in with no, with no gaskets. Uh, somewhere, okay, here's your, here's your main needle. Yep. Oh, good. Needle and seat, there's the gasket. So we're replacing that one, right? That's right. So okay. That's the new version of that. Cool. Made a little different, but yeah, that looks like that was uh, made out of just a thicker piece of brass when they started. But there's nothing wrong with the new one. This one here, there's probably nothing wrong with that, actually. Yeah, it looks fine. If you wanted to use it, we could we could use it because you got a new Viton, a new Viton needle, and that's the only part that ever goes bad is the Viton. So sure. we could use the one, but let's put the new one in for now, so we don't care. It's not like you're uh, going back with a period. It's no perfect, restoration. Perfect restoration carburetor, just as it came from the factory. Nobody's going to take it apart and count points off for, <laughs> for having a different needle and seat in it. As you guys can see, it only took a few seconds to get this all sorted out again. All the screws in the right location, accelerator pump, and the actual uh, pump diaphragm there. So it's all basically laid out and should go back together pretty quickly now. So we are making progress. We just need to pull this gasket off of here and get a razor blade, clean that up, and I'll swap it out. So I dropped the check ball in here. Yep. And. Uh, we're ready for, for the, the accelerator pump. Tower of power. Put the distributors in, fuel distributors. And then here is the hold down. And I believe this goes, now it should have a new gasket for this. Shows this 28. That's this gasket. We're not gonna, we're gonna, this is the gasket they have now. Okay. So this goes right down in here. Make sure this travels nice and free. All right, now this red, is this rubber? Silicone. Silicone. Check valve. It's going in the accelerator pump there. Just pop that right in. And then there should <clears> be a spring. Usually what you want to do is pull it from the back side. Oh, to kind of? It went in. Okay. I already put the top on just to kind of hold the float in so it wouldn't fall out. And so I wouldn't lose any parts. Putting this accelerator pump together as fast as we can here. That way it doesn't go flying with the spring tension. There's the old diaphragm. Yeah, that one was beat. It was, uh, look how stiff that yeah. thing is. <laughs> it won't even it move. Was, it was hard as a rock. Come around, after I tighten them down, I always come back and just go around. Just give it just a just a little snug because the, the gasket will compress a little. Sure. Just come back and make sure it's, you don't want to over tighten them though. I already put the new seal on that. Okay. Uh, we should probably look at the book, but yeah. I think that's how it goes. Well, it does. But we got to screw that in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just like that. Come on now. There it goes. And you want to snug it up so you get out your universal wrench and <laughs> give it just a. Yeah, tight. Cool. About that much. And then the other gaskets go on. Uh, you want to get rid of these oh, the these little nodules left behind the, the old gasket, or you might have a leak. I learned that when I was a very young, when I was a youngster, working on a 175 Bridgestone motorcycle, and I uh, ended up with a leak. Yeah, I didn't scrape off. I left one little notch of a gasket on the base gasket, and I was in such a hurry to put it together that, well, I put it together without properly cleaning all the old gasket off and. It burnt my Bridgestone up. I was going to say, did it catch on fire? No. Yeah. What happened was because there was enough of a gap right there under the base uh -huh. that that cylinder didn't properly lubricate. Ah. Uh, even though it was oil injected, it wouldn't pull the oil up to the, it just, it wouldn't run. It wouldn't pull the fuel in is what it was doing. It wouldn't pull the fuel in and that thing was always uh, fouling spark plugs. And, uh, when I was about 10 years old or something like that, I, I'd repaired a black and white TV and got, and they, I traded a black and white TV for a, for this old Bridgestone that was just, my uncle had it. Yeah. And uh, he said, if you give me a TV, I'll give you a motorcycle. So I couldn't <laughs> wait. And uh, he, he brought that Bridgestone up and it was just a pile of parts. But anyways, I put it all back together. Try that today. Made it run. See who will trade a $500, 75 inch for Walmart for any motorcycle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, that's probably 10 or 
I don't know, maybe 11 years old, and to get a 175 dual twin Bridgestone, I was, well, I was so excited. I went out there, and, but I, I was, back then I was, uh, I was learning the trade, and I didn't know the trade, but I was learning. So for instance, I couldn't make it start, so my dad had an old electric motor that I could plug in. <laughs> I plugged that electric motor in and put that under the rear tire, and I'd spin the engine over until I'd get it to start popping, just because, you know, I, did, I didn't know how to solve the problems. I just knew, I, I just had to get it running until something happened, and, or get it turning. Finally, I figured it out, made it run, and that old, I was so happy to have that engine running. And the first day of spring, when it got really hot, I went out and got on it and took off down the down through the pasture, and I got clear up to the pond on the north end of the property, and she locked up tight. <laughs> Brought it home, tore it apart, and found the problem. I'd ruined it. And, of course, I didn't have any money to buy anything. I'd, I couldn't uh, do a thing with it, so I uh, I do have the generator left. That's the only thing I have left of that motorcycle from when I was just a little bitty kid. Ah, uh, there's the old accelerator pump check valve. It is ruined. And uh, of course we had one part that didn't quite get cleaned, so we got that cleaned up now. It's ready to go in. That's your uh, idle jets. Did you get that other jet in that was all bent? Was it the other idle jet? Yeah, it's this guy. Oh, okay. It won't hurt nothing, it'll still work. There's a big bend on it, right? Somebody like pried on it, so it's got a little... Yeah, you can see when you turn it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we could probably straighten it out, but I don't want to take a chance because it might yeah, break. There's so really no reason yet. We'll just leave it just like it is. Is there a set? Like, you run it all the way in and back well, down? Yeah, I usually run them all the way in and back them out. But... Uh, turning the half to start with. Okay. So we run it in until it just stops, then go half, one, and a half. Do the same thing over here. Even though it might not. Yeah. Half, one, and a half. That's good enough to start it, and then we'll adjust them to adjust them to clean up. And then of course that's good. We're gonna put the float in. Yeah, this goes right here. And there's the wire, so that's that's all good. Now you're supposed to I'm sure usually what you do is you you go across the end of here, make sure everything's seated and you gotta hold it all together tight. And that is about 17, 30 seconds. So then you gotta look up in your book that you got on your phone and see if 17, 30 seconds is right. They actually give us a tool to put across the top of the carb right there so you can measure the float. And what we came up with was 14, 30 seconds. No, yeah, 14, 14, 30 seconds. And if so this is right, you push that down so it's seated. Yep. Make sure that's tight, hold them all together. And we look. Look at that, it's right on 14, 30 seconds, which is 7 16 Yep. which is what the book says. So now we're done with that. Now we gotta get the right yeah, gas a ton of these gas gas gas. It's probably, is it that one? One of those two. Oh, I kept the old one. It's right there. The one with the uh, half moon in it. So there you go. Must be this one right here. Yep, there's the gasket. Should be ready to put this on. And you're probably going to put your uh, data plate. Where's uh, the data it was plate? Right there, I think. Probably. Data plate right there. Drop the other screws in. These are so simple. Yeah, these it went together real quick. These little carburetors are. This is not like rebuilding a quadrajet, jet, but a quadrajet's jet's not much. You know, once you get used to where all the parts go, they're not hard. I used to give you the gasket that went right here for the air. Oh air yeah, cleaner. it's used, not there. Used to come in the kit. Huh. Been a long time since I bought a kit, but that's usually in there. Uh, I've seen it many times. So we got lots of spare parts left over here. Yes, we do. We yep. got all that put together, and basically it will run right now. Sure. Okay, that that thing will it'll run like a scalded dog. Have you ever scalded your dog? <laughs> I've never seen a scalded dog. It's not recommended. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> uh, this probably goes. Again, this might be in the book, but I'll bet you that goes like that. Boy, it'd be nice if we'd have taken this apart. Right. It's always putting the puzzles together that somebody else takes apart. But sometimes that's just the way to get them. <laughs> sometimes they, nobody, they give up on them when they can't get them back together. So I'm not scared. And here we go. Our freshly cleaned, much better looking Motorcraft 2100. All new gaskets throughout the Walker Rebuild Kit. I'll link that below, of course. Shout out to my dad for helping put this back together. And now let's get the cab over open. We gotta open the cab over cab. <laughs> and then uh, put this back on, hook everything up and install it. And of course, over here, we've got a brand new fancy starter from O'Reilly's. 
the old one was from O'Reilly's too, so uh, I gotta take that core back and we'll be good to go. So let's put all this back together. Shouldn't take too long. Something was inside there. Pulling the nuts back off the intake and we're pulling our gasket off of here and cleaning everything up and then we'll be ready to go. Here we go, we're running two gaskets to try to get a little bit of isolation from the intake here. There was an old phenolic spacer, but it was, it was a paper spacer actually and it was trash. So this should make the carb seal up properly, help us solve our vacuum leak issue. And we'll just drop this thing on and I'll hook it up. After we tighten down these nuts, we're already halfway there. So a couple more minutes and we can move on to the starter. Yeah. Work. New starter's on, the carb's on. Let's try to start this thing up on its own for the first time. We got parts everywhere. Okay, it's in neutral, clutch in. Uh, where's the choke? Choke. A oh. little bit of accelerator pump here. We must not have fuel. Even though I'm pretty sure we do. I can hear it in the float bowl. Just a little bit. There might not be enough gas in the tank. I brought five gallons. All right, we have gas now. We can actually hear the pump throwing the fuel into the carb, so it should be good to go. Yes! Oh no! Oh no, shut it down. It's not closing it off. Wow, we are dumping fuel like crazy. Unfortunately, our off switch is unhooking the wire from the battery, so it was the only way Jared had to pull the battery terminal off. Um, I have a new ignition switch, but honestly, the wiring is so messed up. You put a new needle and seat in? All new. I guess we gotta pull the top back off and see what's going on with that. Maybe we just need to wiggle the... Oh, okay, no leak, no leak, no leak, no leak, leak there. Waterfall. We need a, a hammer. Well, it turns out there's a little retainer clip on that float and that wasn't clipped in to its uh, socket. And as soon as we clip that thing in there, go for it. No more leaks. Yeah, that seems better. 
It seems like it wants to live now. a huge burnout. I had no power and then it just sent gravel everywhere. There she comes. I think we're kind of still out of gas. That's probably our issue here. Well, we did it. The cab over runs and drives and with a little bit of brake fluid, it also stops. Right now it does not like to stop. Second gear. Third gear. This is the steering linkage. The steering linkage is gonna break like right now, just right into the Jag. Oh, poor cab over. <laughs> no, this thing is idling along at 10 mile an hour. It's doing great. Good thing it's got this epic steering wheel. Oil pressure. I'd love to have temp. I don't think I have that. Need, need to be able to see the gauges. All right, we're going off road because there's really nowhere else for me to take this thing. All right, I need second gear again. Come on. There's second gear. It doesn't like shifting gears. Hang on, truffles. It's going to be a wild ride. Oh, we made it. I thought we were gonna start, we're spinning like crazy because there's no weight on the rear. <laughs> oh, I came through that ditch and the rear wheels, I felt them just start. I was like, oh, please don't get stuck. This thing weighs too much. We're out in the field super highway. So that's third gear. We're spinning. Here comes fourth gear. 20. No one's ever whipped a cab over like this before. <laughs> High speed! <laughs> I wish the wipers worked. Wiper. Hey! Oh, too bad. Go away, wipers. I forgot, there's like no gas in it and now I'm pointed uphill. Oh no. It's gonna be a long walk here in a minute. Look at it spinning. <laughs> it definitely was made to 
have a little weight on the back. Even like starving for fuel, it's coming up on throttle when I want it. If anyone asks why I'm driving through the field, it's just to knock down my dad's dozer tracks. I gotta make sure he doesn't have any uh, problems with the yard, you know? He'll get it, he'll understand. It runs. I am super happy about that. It runs amazing. Everything works except for the brakes that have like no fluid left in them at all. You can see that somebody's replaced the clutch master, the brake master. They've replaced a lot of this stuff. I almost bought the rebuild kit for the seals on the master, but honestly, I think the master is probably not the problem. It's probably blowing all the brake fluid out of the cylinders out of the wheels. So that is where we stop on the cab over. Like I said, it was going to be for sale after we got it running. It runs amazing. Like I said, I mean, so well. Uh, it could probably use a full tank of gas so it doesn't die when you're on a hill, but other than that, it is rocking and rolling. And I did put a bunch more fuel in it, so it was doing great the last time I could make full throttle pulls. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgo.com for cool shirts not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. I got it all sealed back up. All the windows are up, so uh, this is where it sits until it's out of here. Hopefully it's out of here within the next couple of days. Bring your own battery. No one's getting the battery in this truck. The battery's worth more than 20% of it.